Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for uh, our coffee break. My name is Aaron Morris with Long Building Technologies, and today I have Daikin Applied uh, Application Engineer Gary Cornwell with me uh, to discuss Daikin's new Smart Source Dedicated Outside Air Water Source Heat Pump System. Uh, Gary, thank you for being here today. I'm excited to learn about this product. Hey, good morning, Aaron. <clears throat> we are excited to introduce our new 100% outside air smart source DOAS water source heat pump unit. Uh, this is Daikin's first water source heat pump unit that has been designed specifically for conditioning 100% outside air. It will be the first Daikin water source heat pump to offer fully modulating hot gas reheat and the first to employ an electronic expansion valve. Using an EEV gives us more stable operation than you get with a thermal expansion valve and by actively controlling the refrigerant superheat, we can improve accuracy of the discharge air temperature. Uh, it will provide cooling performance with up to 115 degree entering air and deliver it to the space at neutral air conditions. It will also heat as low as zero degrees up to 70 degrees with 40 degree entering water without any type of preheater. That sounds great. Let's uh, take a look at the product. I was looking through the catalog and I see that we have a common cabinet size throughout the whole product range. How many models are available? Yeah, so the DOAS unit is currently available in four sizes with airflow capability from 600 CFM all the way up to 4,000 CFM. Now, a dedicated outside air unit in Colorado is gonna see a wide range of conditions. Now, what are the operating temperature limitations for this product? Yeah, so the limitations on the air side for cooling is between 56 degrees up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit and from zero degrees to 70 degrees entering air for mechanical heating operation. Uh, the water temperature range is between 30 and 110 degrees. And at these entering temperatures, the unit can supply delivering temperatures and cooling between 70 to 80 degree dry bulb and with a dew point between 45 to 60 degrees. In heating, it can deliver temperatures from 55 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So with the water temp range from 30 to 110, are these units suitable for geothermal applications? Yeah, they are. The, the unit can operate at the same entering water temperatures as our standard water source heat pump units. And if the outside air drops below zero degrees, does the unit have a hard lockout based on ambient temperature? No, the, the unit will continue to operate at some value below zero degrees and until the unit reaches maximum capacity, uh, for example, you, you'll learn later, but a compressor stage eight operating. And if it's unable to achieve the desired discharge air temperature uh, with no preheater, the unit will continue to run and eventually run out of capacity and trip off on one of the safeties. And I saw that the, the factory option is a hydronic preheat coil. Uh, but for applications where hydronic heating water is not available, I assume we could use an electric duct heater external to the DOAS unit to maintain at least that zero degree air? Yeah, absolutely. You could utilize a filled installed electric heater. Uh, once the unit reaches maximum compressor capacity, compressor operating in uh, stage number eight, it will send a zero to 10 volt DC signal to the electric heater to modulate the preheat capacity until the unit reaches set point. Now, you mentioned eight stages, uh, but looking in the catalog, it just shows two scroll compressors on each model. How do we get eight stages of capacity from two compressors? Yeah, so we're using a tandem set of two-stage unloading scroll compressors with offset capacity. Uh, the compressors are de developed by uh, Copeland. Uh, the compressor tandem consists of two two-stage scroll compressors that are mounted on a common rails and piped together into a single circuit. Uh, the compressors are not the same capacity. For example, a 10 ton tandem may have one four ton uh, compressor and one six ton compressor. With these uneven capacity levels, the different combinations of being on or off, loaded or unloaded, results in eight steps of capacity control. Uh, the minimum capacity control uh, varies a little bit in the different size tandems, but ours is around 30% for all of our units. So we're getting eight stages of capacity control with just two compressors. That's, uh, that sounds like a great option for performance and for the budget. Yeah. Now, I'm familiar with direct drive fans with DC motors, which 
has been a very popular option in the industry, you know, on exhaust fans, fan coil units, and terminal heat pumps. Uh, how is this fan system different than the typical direct drive ECM options? Yeah, so this is a shaftless fan system with an EC motor. It's one of the key components of our new unit. Uh, with this new fan technology, the EC motor is integral to the blower assembly. Think of, a, think of it as two halves of a bagel. One half, the motor stator, is fixed to the blower housing with the four legs you see in the picture. Uh, the module you see attached to the, I'm sorry, the other half of the bagel is the rotor, which is attached to the hub of the blower wheel. Uh, the module you see in the attached uh, to the outside of the blower housing is the electronic controller for the motor. This design is up to 35% more efficient than a typical shafted motor, and it can deliver nominal airflows up to about two inches of external static pressure. It also is available in constant volume or VAV mode. VAV mode, so, so this unit could be configured for demand control ventilation, uh, say by varying the fan speed to maintain a space CO2 level, for example. Yeah, that, that's correct. It also can be controlled from a duct static or building static sensor as well. This is a great feature, uh, but I have to ask, why not just go with a standard direct drive ECM? Yeah, so we've done a lot of testing with evaluating uh, different fan types to hit our target airflows and static pressures and determined that the shaftless fan system with an EC motor was our most efficient option. Okay. Now let's take a look at the water side of the unit. Uh, on Daikin's water source heat pump terminal units, we use a coaxial heat exchanger. What went into the decision to use a brace plate heat exchanger for this product? Yeah, so, so we're using the latest advancement in brace plate heat exchanger technology. Uh, these brace plate are not the same as the, uh, the old brace plates that you've been used in the past. What's different is the asymmetric design. As the picture graphic shows, this design has larger water passages shown in the blue compared to the refrigerant passages shown in the red. The older brace plate required a 60 mesh strainer to filter debris from the water with this new asymmetric design, we will require a 20 mesh strainer, which is the same strainer we, we already offer on our accessory hose kits that are used with the traditional coax type heat exchangers. Another benefit of the uh, brace plate is a lower system refrigerant charge than you would see with a uh, coax coil. Okay, well now that we've looked at each major component, uh, I'd like to take a look at the refrigeration circuit. So, this schematic is showing a cooling operation with the example of hot gas reheat for humidity control. And in this example, you can see we have 95, 78 degree air uh, entering, which is getting cooled down to 56, 55 by the evaporator coil, and then reheated to 70, 55 by the hot gas reheat coil. Now, we have limited applications where dehumidification is a concern. In our dry Colorado climate, would we still be using the hot gas reheat coil uh, to heat up the leaving air temp back to a neutral 70 degree air temp when humidity is not a concern? Yeah, for applications in Colorado where dehumidification is of limited concern, our unit is designed to operate in what we refer to as the economy cooling mode. Uh, with the economy cooling, the unit will use compressor staging to control the discharge air temperature between 70 and 80 degrees so the accuracy range will be a little bit wider. The hot gas reheat coil will be, will be bypassed during this mode of operation. However, if you need to maintain an accurate temperature control, you can select what we call the precision cooling method. This control method will slightly overcool the air and then we'll use a, a minimal amount of hot gas reheat to hit your discharge air temperature set point. Okay, so depending on the application, we can select the desired cooling mode to maximize efficiency or precision. Yeah. Now I'd like to take a look at the uh, system in heating mode. Now, this heating schematic looks a little bit different to me. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a hot gas reheat coil used in heating mode before. I can see that the reversing valve is reverse flow from the brace plate heat exchanger to the primary DX or evaporator coil. But it also looks like the discharge hot gas from the compressors is flowing to the hot gas reheat coil first. Uh, could you help walk me through this refrigeration circuit in heating mode? Yeah, so this is our patent pending smart boost heating feature. 
Hot gas reheat coils are commonly used exclusively for reheating, uh, for reheat during dehumidification mode, but are, but are inactive in the basic cooling or heating modes. Our Smart Boost feature is a system piping of control methodology where we use both hot gas reheat coil in series with the primary DX coil when the unit is operating in mechanical heating mode. Uh, by using both the coils for heating, the available heat transfer surface is significantly increased. This allows the smart source DOAS unit to, to deliver a much greater temperature rise across the coils and do it very efficiently. At nominal airflow, you will be able to deliver neutral air with entering air temperatures down to zero degrees without the use of any preheat. As far as we know, there's not another water source on the market that can get within the 20 to 30 degrees of this range. That, that's very exciting. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground very quickly, so I'd like to take a minute to recap. This product has some major advancements in water source heat pump technology, and this slide highlights some of the key pieces of technology built into the smart source dedicated outside air water source heat pump. Uh, we discussed the multi-stage tandem compressors that can give us eight stages of capacity control and the modulating hot gas reheat valve that plays a part in precision cooling and smart boost heating. Uh, we also discussed the electronic expansion valve which provides dynamic superheat control uh, for increased accuracy of discharge air temperature. Uh, and I'm blown away by the shaftless ECM motor uh, improving on an already great technology. And finally, there's the asymmetrical brace plate heat exchanger and the hot gas reheat coil that served as a reheat coil for humidity control and precision cooling discharge air temp control uh, or provides the boost needed in heating mode for Colorado's 100% outside air applications. Uh, that's a lot of technology packed into each DOAS unit. Uh, what kind of factory controller do we have coordinating all of these components? Yeah, so the unit will utilize our new generation of the Microtech controls. Uh, the Microtech controller provides a built-in logic that automatically selects between heating and cooling or dehumidification <coughs> modes of operation. It dynamically controls compressor staging, uh, modulating hot gas reheat, and the electronic controlled expansion valve to, pr to produce a uh, discharge air temperature accuracy of plus or minus one degrees under steady state conditions. Um, it comes standard with a BACnet MS over TP communications capability. And then also uh, a highlight is the, all the fields connections are on the outside of the unit. So there's no need to remove any panels. Uh, well, we're familiar with uh, various Microtech controllers uh, from Daikin's water source heat pump, terminal units, package rooftop equipment, and chillers. Uh, so it's good to know we have a robust controller to optimize the system's performance. Uh, well, Gary, thank you for joining me this morning and filling us all in on the innovative features that went into designing the Daikin Smart Source dedicated outside air water source heat pump system. I see this being a great option for providing uh, ventilation on water source heat pump projects and water cooled BRB projects. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to allow me to <clears throat> introduce this new uh, Daikin DOAS water source heat pump unit. Uh, we are very excited about this new product. Uh, and thanks to everyone uh, for joining us for today's coffee break. Uh, catalogs for this product are available at dykenapplied.com. And if you have any questions about this project uh, product, please contact your long equipment salesman. And I hope you'll join us again next week when Andrew Tobin will be discussing heat recovery chillers. Uh, thank you and goodbye.